Mexico. Oh, that was crazy. Let's not start without plugging the microphone in. Crazy. Hello, friends. Good to see you. Got the right angle of the monitor now. Wasn't that crazy? Yesterday's Bible study looking all weird with a different angle for me. Crazy. Yeah, kind of need the mic, right, Cindy? One would think so. Hi, Faith. Hi, Bobby Joe. Hi, Carol. Happy Friday. We got a couple of things to do. And while we're doing these couple of things, hi, Colonel. While we're doing these couple of things, as a general reminder that we will, we are always, as always, having a discussion here. We are not in any way, shape, or form having a monologue. I am an anti-monologue. I do not want a monologue. So what I want us to do is have a, um, I want us to have a discussion. I want us to, to be, to, so ask your questions and we will answer them as best we can. We'll have a shorter Bible study today. Um, and, um. Shorter Bible study today. Uh, probably because uh, Finker's taking Monday. Uh, praise God! And um, so with Finker taking Monday, um, he wants to do chapter five. Hi, Terry Lynn. The Lord be with you. Is that up? All right. Hey, Thor. Hey, buddy. You want to say hello to everybody? Seriously? Nothing? Those are treats, bud. What are you doing throwing treats at me? All right, let's take a look at uh, Genesis chapter 4. Hi, Beth. Wilt, good to see you. Um, we left with the warning. Uh, we stopped at verse 7 with God warning... Um, hi, Sue. Good to see you with God warning Cain. Remember, there are two sons born of, of Adam and his, his newly named wife, Eve, um, Cain, who means possession. He's, he's the, um, he's the oldest son, the one that receives all the love, uh, the fave son. And um, along with with Cain, after Cain comes, um, Abel, whose name means breath. And so, um, really? Are you just not catching treats anymore? Hi, Steve. Good to see you. So one son who is, is going to be the heir of everything, and one son who is just a breath. And this is big. This is big. The one son who's supposed to be savior of the world, and the one son who is nothing. He's going to work. Let's get to the text. If you do well, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do well, sin is crouching at your door. Its desire is for you, is contrary to you. You must master it or it will rule you. You know, this moment of law for those who love to talk about the law, that those who love to sort of think about the law, this moment of law, I don't, I'm not liking that picture in a picture shape. This moment of law
is such a condemning word, condemning word. For those who love law, law sounds like this. Get your stuff together or you're going to hell. And this has to do with your thoughts. This has to do with your, um, your, your words. And this has to do with your deeds. Get right or you will be suffering for all eternity. And this is, this is, this is awful law. It's a condemning word. But it's the truth. And on the outside, no one suspected anything was going on with Cain toward Abel. Luther says that if he had, if mom and dad had known that Cain felt this way toward his brother, they would have never let him out of their sight. So on all externals, Cain is doing just fine. Thank you very much. Hey, bud, come here. You want this treat? Does somebody want this treat? Well, you're going to have to come here. I'm not throwing another treat that you're not going to catch. We're not doing that game. So Cain spoke to Abel, his brother. Again, no sign of evil intent, no warning. Um, if Will Robinson was here, I'd be like, danger, Abel, son of Adam, danger, danger, nothing, nothing at all. I have my uh, championship LSU cup here, but no warning. And when they were in the field, oops. So when they were in the field, um, Cain um, stood up, rose up um, against Abel. Again, repetition is key here. Um, it's Abel, his brother. He spoke to Abel, his brother. He rose up against Abel, his brother. And don't think that this word is just thrown around. That's his brother. That's blood. He rose up against him. What kind of universe is this? He rose up against his brother. And he killed him. This is the situation with sin. Make no mistake about it. This is what's going on with sin. The fall was not abstract the fall was concrete they are sinners they are evil to the core they are murderers Abel has killed his brother this is what's come into the world Luther says that when God speaks to Abel, I'm sorry, Cain, he speaks through his dad. Sort of interesting. Luther looks and reads Genesis in a, um, in a very office of the holy ministry way. Adam preached to Eve 
and Adam preached to Cain. You could take that for what it's worth. Um, where is, and, 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 and the Lord said, and the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. I don't, yeah, I don't know where he is. Um, I, I, am I my brother's guardian? Do I guard my brother? There is Samar again, which um, means to keep, guard, preserve. Um, in the Septuagint, it's it's um, phylox, philoso. Um, a word 91st of the time in the scriptures have a preacher, even the divine one, the son. There you go. And that's why, and that's why Luther takes it the way it does. However you want to read this, I'm okay with it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make a law out of this, but, um, this is the word that is also of, often translated Shamar as obey. Here it does not mean obey. In fact, I don't believe it ever means, well, means to keep means to keep um he is a little sassy grace um i i believe with luther that there was some time between the death of abel and this interaction and luther says that there is this gap because um god wants abel to repent I'm sorry, God wants Cain to repent. So there is this time between um, the sin and the there's a, there's a, there's a gap between the sin and, and the and the call to repentance. And and Luther's convinced that this this is because God wanted to save Cain. Even though he knew what was going to happen, even though he knew what Cain had done, he wanted Cain to confess his sins. And Finker's right, Shamar is used in the commandments, you will cherish them and do them. And when that is translated obey. I love this too, though. How does Everyone, should everyone know that Cain has murdered his brother? Luther says, he's your brother. By, its, by, by the very definition of, of uh, um, by the very definition of brother, you should be his keeper. Where's Abel? Your brother. I'm, uh, what, what? I don't know. I, Am I, my, am I my brother's keeper? Well, yeah. Yeah, you're supposed to be your brother's keeper. Yeah, that That's definition of brother. Terry Lynn, I'm going to pick on you because I love you. Uh, you and I are brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay? Um, that means we look out for each other. That means that your needs are more important than my needs and my needs are more important to you than your needs. And that is not in the sense that my uh, oldest son once sort of figured out while he was growing up. Um, he says to me, you know, dad, if, 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 uh, if my brother is supposed to put my needs first and I'm supposed to put his needs first, um, Shouldn't that mean that I always get my what I want? Because, I mean, I'm supposed to put my brother's needs first and he's supposed to put my needs first. So I'm going to put his need first to put me first. And there it is. No. 
Sin is crouching at your door, young man. You must master it or it will rule you. You should be your brother's keeper. You should look after your brother. Cain, it's awful that you didn't. What have you done? And he said, what have you done? The coal. Now there's that word again. It was used in chapter three twice. Voice. I like the SV translation here. I do not like the translation of sound of the Lord walking in the cool of the day. Um, Cause that that's the same word. This has been used three times or four times in four chapters and three times it's voice, it should be voice again. The voice of your of the blood of your brother. Cries out to me from the Adama, from the from 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 where Adam was taken. So if you take this as Adam. How awful is this? If Adam is delivering this message from God, how awful awful is this? You've killed my son. The Lord does not miss your suffering. The Lord does not miss your pain. The Lord does not miss what happens to you in life. The Lord does not miss when you're cheated, when you're robbed, when you're abused. The Lord does not miss when you're hurting, when you cry yourself to sleep at night, when the loneliness is so great that you can't, you can't handle it. The Lord does not miss abuse women who are choked and lifted up off the ground. The Lord does not miss those who have been cheated on. The Lord does not miss those who can't muster the strength to go another day. The Lord does not miss those who have been sinned against. He does not miss that those who are, are scared. The Lord does not miss you hiding in your home because you're scared of COVID-19. He doesn't miss it. That's what the gospel of this sentence is. For Abel and for us. It is a word of law for Cain. The blood of your brother cries out to me from the, from the Adama. But for those of us who are betrayed by Judas, great quote, uh, um, uh, thinker, Cain prefigures Judas. Um, do you portray the son of man with a kiss? Have a talk with me, Abel. Um, and we, uh, and, 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 and then he rises up. He stands up against his brother and kills him. The Lord does not miss your pain. And Abel's event of injure is far greater than Abel could ever do. Yet do you think it Abel could have avenged himself as much as God is going to avenge him? Do you think that precious is in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints? He's got you. We're so concerned, and I'm gonna I'm gonna piggyback uh, Finker's quote. We're so concerned about the last day being law day for us, where the VCR begins to play, and all of our sins are shown to be the the case that we miss that the last day is reconciliation day, it's comfort day, it's 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 
wronged people get justice day. Does anyone not receive justice? What if a murderer, mur- what if, what if, what if Cain had repented? Had Cain repented, he'd have been absolved. This would not have happened. Would he have still received the curse? I don't think so. Except he dodges God, he avoids God, he tries to do everything but repent. And judgment comes on him. And it's awful. And it's terrible. The last day is the day in which everything is fixed. Well, well, what if that person who sins against me repents on their on their deathbed bed and they don't get what's coming to them? Do you really want people to get what's coming to them? Is that what you really want? Why? I don't want people to get what's coming to them. I want people to repent and to believe. And if God uses something that they had done evil to me in order to wake them up to to their need for him, winner, winner, chicken dinner, baby. That's what we're talking about. Um. Aubrey, you look too uh, young to have uh, the VCR playing, so we're going to use a DVR for your quote. But even though those DVR sins will be declared, God in a loud, victorious voice declares every time that they are read because of Jesus, forgiven. True. 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 So the Adama screams and cries of the, for the for the blood of Abel. The voice of the blood of Abel is crying out. And now You are cursed from the Adama, which opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Is it DCE Day, Sandra? Praise God for the work of DCEs. Thank you, Audrey. Not Aubrey. Bad. I'm sorry, I'm old, Audrey. Bad eyes. Bad eyes. Lots on the screen. If you could see my screen, there is a ton on the screen for me. 34-inch monitor filled with, with Hebrew and Greek and 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 Windows. And, and I'm looking at... So please forgive me, um, Audrey. Thank you very much. And um, the DVR is playing for you, not the VCR. For me, it's Betamax. Anyway, um, when you work the ground, verse 12, when you work, again, the ground is not right. The, when you work the Adama, let's just stay consistent. Um, you are, there's no way that you're older than me. I, I'm old. I only look young. I'm old. Um, uh, when you work the ground, the when you work the Adama, 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 when you work the ground which your dad was taken, when you work the ground that now screams your brother's blood, when you work the ground from now on, because you have struck the shepherd, It shall no longer yield its strength to you.
Yeah, right on, Cheryl. The blood of Jesus covers this. The ground no longer screams for the blood of all the people we've killed and hated. Instead, the ground now screams the blood of Jesus. Comfort, comfort these my people, says your God. I love the way the Hebrew does this because the, the Hebrew does the same. Uh, the Greek does the same thing. Um, uh, wanderer and fugitive on the, on the Haaretz is, um, is a translation. It's, it's an interpretation. Um, so this is a word that means um, to, to quiver you will be um you you will be quivering and waking and un, unstable and you'll go to and fro wandering around so the rest of your life is going to be spent shaking with fear as you go around this earth wandering around this earth um yeah, we do murder with words, thoughts, or deeds. The Septuagint has um, strenon, kai, uh, stremon, um, which is uh, uh, groaning and sighing uh, and uh, uh, quaking. So you will be on the earth groaning and quaking. It's like wanderer and fugitive is like, is like, um, uh, it's like uh, uh, the fugitive. I need a hard target search for every outhouse, hen house, and in a five mile radius. The fugitive's name is Doctor Richard Kimball. No, the fugitive's name is Kane. Um, You're going to roam around trembling and afraid. By the way, the Son of God takes on this sin. Foxes have holes, birds of the air have uh, nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. No sin, no judgment that befalls anyone does not befall Jesus. Marked. Thirteen, and Cain said to Yahweh, um, "My transgression, my guilt, my punishment, is too great for me. Behold, Cain, you have uh, driven me this day." away from the face of the Adama, uh, from the face of the, of the earth, from the face of the dirt, from the face of the ground. And your face, you have hidden from me. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, of your face, I, I, from your face, I shall be hidden. Um, that is a um, yeah. You've hidden. You've hidden it from me. Nifal. It's a first person. So I a passive. I have been hidden from your face. The Lord bless you, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Lift up his face, his smiling face at you and give you peace. Not for Cain. He has been hidden from his face. Yep. Future passive in the Septuagint. Crypto. 
Um, he repeats what he says. Um, quaking and wandering to and fro on the earth, I will be. So he repeats back to G. Now, finally. Now, finally, he's repeating to God what God says. Finally. Had he done it back in back five verses ago, Abel would be alive. But now he finally he he finally um his reaction when God says, You gotta watch out, sin's crouching at your door. You gotta master it or rule it. I got this, God. I got this. And now he's repeating back the Lord's words, but he's repeating them back like, I can't do this. You're you're too mean to me. Cain, the first snowflake. Whoever finds me will kill me. So just, 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 just take this in for an instant. So it was okay for Cain to kill Abel, but it's not okay with Cain for someone to kill him. And this is prototypical of us. We come out of church, we shake Pastor um, Pastor Towns' hand and says, that was a great sermon. They really needed to hear that. You must be joking. They didn't need to hear it. You needed to hear it. Oh, my punishment's too great. People are going to kill me. You mean like you killed Abel? There's a, um, there's, 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 there's gotta be like a, like this, is, this is an office meme waiting to find it, find you. Um, um, uh, have you lost your mind boy? Cause I'll help you find it. I mean, you have lost your mind. Cain was the Anakin Skywalker. The one who was supposed to fix everything. And instead, he's gone to the dark side. Jesus 1.0 is an absolute... I'm sorry. Jesus 2.0, since Adam was 1.0. 2.0 is an absolute failure too. Not sure I'm supposed to have the study Bible open um, at the same time. So you're going to get the Explorer. Dora, 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 the Explorer. Sorry. Uh, 14. You can't do this to me. The punishment is too bad. Lesticos here. New. The Lord said, not so. Look at this. He doesn't have to do 15. This shows how God is towards sinners. He does not have to do 15. Yahweh said to him, no, uh uh-uh. If anyone kills Cain, vengeance will be visited upon him sevenfold. Wonderful word here. Yeah. And the Lord put a sign on Cain. That's the, the, um, that's what the, um, um, that's what the Septuagint translates this word as. So mark or sign. (laughs) 
Um, and the Lord put a sign on Cain, lest any, lest all who um, find him would off him. Did I sing? I don't remember singing. I, I, I like sang and then I forgot I sang. How terrible is that? There's a lot of pressure being on this live thing. Um, and Cain went away from the face of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod which is east of Edon. This is a tough one. Uh, this is Eden. The translate uh, the uh, Septuagint has it as Edem. Um, hmm. East of oh the Dora song. Thank you, Cindy. I, I I forgot that I. Yes, you do remember Cheryl. Um, why does God do that? Have compassion, um, Terry Lynn. Uh, one, he's having compassion on us. He's showing us and teaching us that vengeance is his, not ours to take. Um, that's one thing. Um, two, I think he's still trying to save Abel. I'm sorry, Adam. Cain. He's still trying to save Cain. He's merciful to him. He marks him. Nobody's going to kill you. Uh, I don't think this is part of judgment. You're not getting off that easy. I don't I don't see it that way. I see it as God. God is merciful. No one's going to kill you. No one's going to do that. Ha! Uh, I'm going to quote Finker. Going east is going away from the presence of God. It's a theological direction, not Google Maps direction on where that place is. Yeah. Before I can call out um, Finker for his Bible study and his comments to me, and I'm like, he's like, can you find Eden? Could you give me the GPS coordinates? Well, evidently you can go east of Eden. They can make books of east of Eden. Um, is the seven significant? I would say so, Terry Lynn, as the Lord gives its significance. Good questions today. Um, I think it's absolute. I don't know how Ooh, I almost said something bad. Sandra, your comment is absolute bull. Some people used to think that the mark of Cain is being dark skinned. That is awful. Absolutely awful. It's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Unbiblical. And, and full of hate. Thanks for pointing that out as something we can shoot down. Shot through the heart and you're to blame. You give love a bad name. Sorry. Um, Cain knew his wife. Oh, that's awful, Terry Lynn. I'm... Hmm. Yeah, no. Nothing with that. In fact, none of Cain's line survives. That's a Luther quote. None of Cain's line survives. Thanks, Grace. Good catch. It's Bon Jovi. I don't know where it comes from. It's just an iTunes thing. You get to hear what I'm listening to while I write my sermons. To Enoch, I'm sorry, Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bore Enoch. Um, Cain then builds a city. He calls the city after the name of his son, Enoch. And now there are two churches. The church of Adam and the line. And the church of Cain. Cain can't work the ground. So now he's building small towns. So 
So nobody from what we're about to hear lives. I got to swing back and, and handle something. Uh, one of the most watched videos that I've ever done was a handling of a question of who's Cain afraid of? So like, if it's Cain, Abel, Adam, Eve, and now Abel's gone, who's Cain afraid of? What does Cain have to be afraid of? Mom and dad? Well, first of all, that's rather short-sighted because, um, and, th and that's to look at this like nothing is happening while we're focusing on Cain and Abel. It's like, Adam's like, well, we had two kids and now we're done. And that, and like Cain hasn't had any kids. Okay. Everybody's going to be having kids. And that's who Cain's worried about. Cain's worried about all of the kids on this side. Often him. And their kids. 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 This is something to remember in Genesis. Adam and Eve don't go away. Just because the, the spotlight isn't on them doesn't mean they go away. They're still alive. Um, I think the math has... Um, Cain, uh, Abe, uh, Adam and Eve having just died around the time of Noah. Around, when Noah starts building his big, big boat, Adam and Eve had just died. You want to check my math on that, but I don't really care. But the, but the, 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 cause I'm, this isn't a math lesson. Finker just sent me a Godfather quote, but, um, The deal here is, though, that the two churches are going to grow, and one church will end, and one church will continue. The church who is looking for and expecting Christ continues on. Cain's line continues on, but it will come to an end. That church is going to die. So who was Cain afraid of? Everybody else that was going to be born. Or had been born. Get grandkids and kids and grandkids and look. Freda was afraid of Michael. After Michael exposed him in The Godfather. I, oh, I'm going I'm to give you a little bit of my life. My brother, older brother, when I was little, when I was a when I, I was a freshman, he was a senior. My older brother ran away from home, made my parents miserable, made my parents miserable. Everything's okay now. We're a happy family now, but um, it's just teenage years, you know. But I'm gonna be clear with you: the first chance I got to engage my brother for the sake of my mom and dad, and, uh, it's for my sake of my mom. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Southern boy, so mama was upset. You can bet that my brother and I had a scuffle later on. It was over wheat thins, but it wasn't over wheat thins. It was over the fact that he had, had hurt my parents. We're cool now, by the way, but I'm just saying. I got into a knockdown drag out with my brother because I was looking for him. Cain believes that one of these people is going to get him. And God protects him. And so also teaches us that we don't need to go find our brother when he's hurt our parents and hurt them. It was a little young Borkart moment. I was a calm kid, my mother's angel. It was one, you know, hiccup of grumpy. Yeah, he thought people were as evil as he was. 
And when you live a hundred years, you're going to have lots of kids. Look. I like to, I like to make fun of Finker. I don't know. Finker, you have like a thousand kids now because you're in Kansas. And the internet's bad. So imagine a hundred years without, hundreds of years without Netflix. I think that says enough. Uh, was that the same brother you framed with the, um, with the candy? Yes, yes. It was my older brother that I framed, not my younger brother. I got that story slightly uh, misremembered. And all of you were condemning me for, for framing a, a, a five-year-old. Who was evil? All right. K knew his wife bore uh, Enoch. He built a, a town. I wouldn't say city. I would say that translates as town. He called the name of that town Enoch after his son. Enoch was born. Irid. Irid was born. Uh, Mehu Yael. Mehu Yael fathered. Methushael. Methushael fathered Lamech. Lamech took two wives. Um... Uh, commentary says that this is the first polygamy. I would tend to say this is the first polygamy that's recorded. Um, I, I, I like that better because we're a little that we gotta we gotta sort of acknowledge that a lot of things are going on that we don't hear about, and it's okay that we don't hear about it. Um, and so there's a lot of things going on that we don't hear about, and we should be okay with that. We should be cool with that. I'm gonna finish this chapter. Um, Lamech had two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zala. Um, Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. Okay, sounds great. Tents and livestock from Cain's line. Um, his brother's name was Jabal, who was the father of those who play the lyre and the pipe. That's where that comes from. Sweet. Uh, Zala bore Tubal Cain, who was a forger of all the instruments of bronze and iron. Well, there you go. He's a blacksmith. The sister of Kubal Cain uh, was Nema. Uh, okay. It's an interesting. Um, I have no idea why they tell us who his sister is. And I'm okay with that. Lamech said to his wives, and this, I want you to hear this because I want you to understand how icky this church is. He tells his wives, Ada, Zala, hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me a young man for striking me. Is Cain's should be avenged sevenfold. Lamech should be 77fold. And if this sounds like he's beating his chest, like, look how bad I am. I popped a cap in a kid for looking at me funny. And I, I popped another one in for a kid for, for hitting me. It's a meant to be. This is what Cain's line is like. His sin flows generations down the line. And it's icky, and it's awful, and it's gross. It's awful. This is humanity. Adam knew his wife again. And she bore to him a son named Seth. For she said, um, 
Seth means appointed. It means determined, ordered, set. Um, uh, so she, it, it, this is, she names him. They're going to learn their lesson. They're not going to do the thing where like, oh, you're the greatest son ever, Cain. And, uh, and then there's you, Abel. Now this time... God has appointed for me a seed. Instead of Abel. For Cain killed him. To Seth, was also born a son and he called his name Enosh. And um, then um, uh, then then folks began to call on the name of the Lord. On the name of Yahweh. And I want, um, if it's okay with you, Pastor Finker, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here. Um, but I think that Finker should go back and take 25 because I haven't done it justice. Um, I just wanted to finish the chapter because I said I would. No Bible study tomorrow. Um, I would encourage you. I would encourage you to continue giving to your churches. I would encourage you to continue um, um, uh, giving to your favorite nonprofits. Your churches need your gifts. Higher Things also, since they're hosting this Bible study, needs your gifts. Go to support.higherthings.org and give today. No Bible study tomorrow. Pastor Finker will pick up on Monday with, I think he needs to do this first because this verse lays out that folks begin to call on the name of the Lord again. As long as there's Seth's line, we're not hearing about Yahweh. But from, I'm sorry, Cain's line, we're not hearing about Yahweh. Seth's line, they call on the name of Yahweh. They call on the name of the Lord. And whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm Pastor Borkart. Have a blessed day. I will see you soon.